Today we are going to dive into the concepts and the whole aspect of pressure profiling with Gießen roasting machines. And why is pressure profiling so interesting? Because this is a feature that has an amazing impact on the flavor profile of the coffee independently from the roast color. And that's why I think it's so, so interesting to, to look at. So in this program today, I'm going to discuss and review some of the underlying concepts of uh, pressure profiling. Then, of course, I want to do a um, roasting trial with you. And then I'm going to put the coffee that has been roasted with different settings on the pressure um, PA setting of the Gießen roasting machine. I'm going to analyze these coffees with you. So this is going to be really, really cool, really interesting. And even if you do not currently have a Gießen coffee roasting machine, then this can be very interesting because with some machines, you can actually make them behave a little bit like a Gießen in this matter. So with pressure profiling, there is basically a, a mechanical sensor in the Gießen uh, roasting machine that senses, that measures the under pressure. And the setting you choose for that under pressure, that is the setting that the machine will maintain. And so the roasting fan, regardless whether the machine is somewhat clogged up or not due to cleaning, uh, the roasting fan will maintain that pressure. And that's result into a consistency of flavor profile and I, and I think that that is a huge feature of Gießen roasting machines. Some of the best um, flavor pros, uh, profiles I've developed is by starting at a lower PA setting. So during this time in, in your drying phase you're basically um, trying to um, obtain a controlled process of of dehydration of the bean, the pre-drying. And then once I get into the beginning of the Maillard reactions, which is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, um, that's not the beginning, but that's when the Maillard reactions get to their, towards their peak actually. Once the Maillard reactions really start to evolve around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, then I start to increase my PA setting in order to highlight the unique properties of the acidity and the sweetness of the coffee. And I've done, I've been able to create some remarkable roasting results in that way. So what I re what recommend to you is that with your Gießen coffee roasting machine, you start to roast your, your maybe your a coffee that you're really familiar with and start roasting that coffee in the normal way, in the normal setting, and now start to do some pressure profiling with that coffee. You could do your pre-drying phase up till 250 degrees um, at a constant, let's say 110 PA, and then from 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, you increase that by 20 to 30 points, and then once you get to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, now you're getting closer to the caramelization phase. Now you're getting also very likely closer to the first crack and to the development stage. Now you increase your pressure again by 30 to 40 points. And you will find that if you roast your coffee in that way versus in the normal way, the old way, that um, the heat profile will obviously slightly change, but also the outcome flavor profile will be really unique and different. Whether it will be preferred or better or not, that is to be seen, but this could be a good way in which you could um, put the concept of pressure profiling to the test. So um, let's get to work. I um, take one more sip of this coffee before I'm going to um, do some pressure profiling to improve it, to make it better. Mm. 
and then we'll get to work. We'll do some roasting and then later on some cupping and we'll make some uh, final conclusions. So I am now starting to roast the coffee for our um, experiment. Or not experiment, this is actually a proof of concept to show you how pressure profiling works uh, with your Gießen coffee roasting machine. Um, as I mentioned before, the Gießen has a, the ability to adjust the internal pressure by a PA setting, Pascal setting, and the higher I set that PA, the more the fan will work to maintain that higher pressure. I have started to roast, right now I'm still at 90% or at 90 PA, 90 Pascal. And you can see here, we've just started this batch. So we are at a relatively high rate of rise. At this moment, I'm roasting um, in the power auto setting, meaning I'm using the thermostat setting of the roaster, in which, in this case, I have a set point that is set at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that here as well. And the real air temperature right now is 265. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to show you at what stage I'm going to increase the PA setting. Now I'm at 90, which is the almost the lowest setting. And I'm going to very soon increase the PA setting to 120, increase it by 30 points, specifically when we start really getting into the Meijer reactions. And right now we are at two, almost 250 bean temperature. Now the Meijer reactions start kicking in. And so this might be a good time to make my first increase in the PA. This, by the way, is the um, newest version of the Roast Profiler software of Gießen. I really love it because it's very easy to work with. The graphical display is uh, very clear. So now we are at 120 PA. And if you come closer, you can possibly hear that the fan is operating at a slightly higher output. We can validate that on our software display. It says power, power auto here, and it says here the pressure of 120. But then on my smaller screen, I can actually go to this display and now I can see that the fan right now operates at 30%. Prior to that it was operating at a slightly lower pressure. So again, with this pressure profiling, I can allow this La Cabra coffee, this AF1 La Cabra, to come out in terms of flavor profile with a higher perceived acidity, specifically we are uh, manipulating the citric and the malic acidity. Citric acidity, you typically taste more on the tip of your tongue, the malic on the side of your tongue. Citric acidity is of citrus fruit and malic more of green apple. So let's see where we are in terms of our roast profile. So right now, my bean temperature is 336. Air pressure is 120. So fairly soon I'm going to increase again my pressure setting and I'm going to decrease my um, burner, my flame control. And so from that perspective, I'm going to set my flame, oh, not off. 
going to 50% flame level. And I'm going to increase my pressure setting. Right now we are at beyond 350 beam temperature. I'm going to increase it by 20 points. Oh, like this. And I can hear my fan is now operating at a higher point. At this moment, it might be good to start looking at my bean color. And you can see these beans are very close to the first crack. Actually, my first crack is starting. Now I'm going to reduce my power. I'm going to overrule basically my thermostat setting. I'm going to 10%. And I'm going to bring my pressure up by another 40 points. Sorry, by another 20 points. And so right now my thermostat limits my flame level. That's really good at this stage. And now I'm going to finish this roast in a controlled manner. And if you want to watch with me where I'm calling the roast. I want to match my previous color and I'm there. That's the end of the roast. So to summarize, I started at 90, increased to 120, increased to 140, and finished the pressure at 160. What this does, it highlights the acidity of the coffee. And in two days, I prefer to wait for two days. Then we're going to assess together how this worked out. So this is a very successful, or potentially successful way to manipulate the flavor of your roasted coffee. And I think Gießen really has a, such a unique feature with this. So let's see in two days how this turns out in the cup. So it's now two days after I did the uh, test roasting with you. And uh, why two days? Because I always like to wait at least 24 hours, preferably 48 to 72 hours before I do a um, sensory test when I'm doing these pressure profiling uh, experiments and over time you just get to um, understand them better the flavor profile when the coffee has been um, degassing a little bit more. So here on my right where the Gießen cup is, beautiful Gießen um, rinse cup, is the um, benchmark profile that's where I started. This was uh, roasted throughout at a setting of 120 PA. And here on my left, I have the sample of the batch that we roasted together using the uh, profile where we gradually increase the uh, PA setting, the pressure profiling setting. So I'm first going to smell the coffee. Really interesting. I get brighter notes here. That was kind of what I hoped for. I um, wanted to, um, to highlight the citrus notes of this La Cabra coffee. Now I'm going to add some water and then I'm going to smell the aromatics. And then when I'm doing the tasting, then we will discuss the results a little bit more. So now I'm letting the coffee to sit for, to infuse for another couple of minutes at least. We typically here at Boot Coffee Campus, we do that for four minutes. That also depends on you know, what your circumstances are, the infusion time, you know, when you're um, 
in Bogota, which is very high, then you want to possibly do a slightly shorter infusion than if you are at sea level where we are. And now I'm going to smell the grounds above the cup. And I found in the test sample where we did the pressure profiling on this side, I did find some interesting brighter notes, some citrusy notes. Let me first uh, smell the benchmark. So that's my benchmark. This La Cabra um, AF1 variety is, um, has a kind of an interesting spicy nose. It has um, uh, citrus, spice and some fruit and then also some florals on the back end. And then what I was hoping to specifically increase, uh, intensify the citrus notes on the flavor, but also to see if I can um, intensify the nose of the coffee. The, hopefully the florals will be more pronounced. And I think I'm picking up some more citrus notes on the fragrance or in the ar aromatics, but whether or not it's more floral, that remains to be seen. And we will need to just do the tasting. And then in the aftertaste, I will really start looking also for those florals as well. So now it is about time to break the crust with my spoon. Definitely got some interesting citrus notes here. And I do not get those as much um, in the um, benchmark. That's interesting. So now I'm going to clean these samples get them ready for cupping. And you know, when I do these trials here in our lab, I typically use at least two cups on a sample where I um, have two identical cups just for having the opportunity to have more sample material to compare with. Um, so I don't necessarily feel that I should do a full official SCA cupping with five cups per sample in this case. So now I'm almost ready to start cupping and we'll give it a few more minutes so that I don't burn my mouth so that we can start doing our tasting evaluation. So I'm now almost 12 minutes in after I poured the water. So this is a good time to really start cupping. I have everything ready. And um, I already have some ideas, some, some expectations based upon what I smelled in the dry fragrance in the aromatics. And let's see how the flavor test goes. Very sweet, very fruity. Mm. The benchmark AF1 of La Cabra has kind of that spice aftertaste, really interesting. Um, so this one was roasted throughout at 120 PA setting. And then let's see our trial coffee. So I do get on um, my trial coffee, I do get some really interesting highlighting, highlights of a citrus note, like a mandarin orange note. Um, the aftertaste just uh, pops a little bit more than with this coffee. So, so far I can say on this AF1, this pressure profiling seems to really work and I need to follow this coffee through. Right now we are like 13 minutes and something. So obviously I need to um, continue cupping this coffee and then make, making some notes as well so that I can basically review the results later on. So I'm going to continue with this for a while, but before we are going to finish this program, I have some final tips for you. So if you um, do not have a Gießen machine yet, then how can you do this um, at home with your own roasting machine? Um, you could see if your roasting machine has a, uh, some, some sort of a variable speed 
control on your um, roaster impeller and you could build in uh, potentially a, um, um, a pressure analog pressure meter to see at what pressure you're running. Um, that could be one way to mimic a bit what we're doing here with the Giesen technology. But if you do have a um, Giesen machine, then I recommend that you start um, experimenting with this. And um, always important to always compare these samples at the same roast color. Ideally not to vary the uh, roasting time too much. These samples were all roasted within a window of 9 to 11 minutes. And I recommend that you're not going faster or slower. And then third is that you're going to do this one step at a time. So change one parameter at a time, not too many parameters all at the same time. And then when you're doing your testing, cupping is great, but I also would recommend that you do a testing in, um, in a brewing machine so that you can really find out how this works out for your clients. But it's exciting. Pressure profiling, I think, is a wonderful way to um, influence the flavor profile of your coffee. Um, another tip is also if your coffee is getting slightly um, in terms of flavor profile, maybe on the aged side, um, then you could also use your pressure profiling to, to jazz up the acidity a little bit more by roasting this coffee at a relatively high pressure towards the final part of the roast. So, in, so rather than following the 90, 120, 140, 160 profile, you could do 90, 120. And that will highlight the acidity even more of the coffee. And that can help sometimes with coffees that start showing age to, to spice them up, to jazz them up. Um, so good luck with this. Um, send us any questions. Also, we have, um, as always, there are some, um, there's an interesting article that we wrote about this topic and um, the cupping form that we filled out, you can download that. Have fun with it, good luck, see you again soon, bye bye.